All right, the next concept for our trig unit is going to be about radians. Now, we've talked about degrees. We're taking the sine of 30, cosine of negative 60, you name it. We took trig functions of degrees, right? Well, now we're going to be using radians. Radians are basically in terms of pi. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with a little bit of pi right now. Remember how we have that thing on our calculator where it was like degrees and radians. We changed that. Radians, that's what we're dealing with now. But you can still keep your calculator on degrees. All right, don't change that. So on the xy coordinate plane, we know that we have 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360, right? Well, in radians, still start with 0 on that one, but we have pi over 2 for 90, pi for 180, 3 pi, over 2, or like 1.5 pi, so 1.5 pi, for 270, and then for 360, it's 2 pi. And we can get into the why this is and whatnot. I'm not going to go into that in this video. There are videos online that you can take a look at if you are wondering about the why, but I don't want to, you know, overstimulate you guys with all this awesome information. So we'll keep it to the bare minimum, okay? So we've got 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi for our quadrantal angles, okay? One of the things we're going to be doing with our radians is going from radians to degrees, degrees to radians. So converting them, so to speak. Okay, so we're going to be able to convert our units here. Now, how would we go about converting from degrees to radians, radians to degrees? Well, to go from degrees to radians, It's going to be the degrees times pi over 180. And that's going to equal the radians. To go from radians to degrees, we're going to take the radians, multiply them by 180 over pi. And that will give us the degrees. So it's either multiplying by pi over 180 or 180 over pi. And if you ever forget, think about this. Radians have pi, right? Radians have pi in them. Well, if we want to get rid of the pi to go to degrees, if we divide by a pi, if we're multiplying with pi in the denominator, that's going to cancel out the pi. Okay? If you're going from degrees to radians, if you want to get a pi into your units, well, you take the degree, multiply by pi over 180, and now there's going to be a pi left in it. Let's check it out. So let's convert 60 degrees to radians. Okay? Well, to convert to, to radians, I have to multiply by pi over 180. Now, if you're a little scared of fractions, which I know some of us are, you can always plug 60 divided by 180 into your calculator. So just these two parts, you would plug in 60 over 180 into your calculator. Hit enter, you'll get a decimal. Hit math and then fraction. We've done that before. Or cross out those zeros. Now I have 6 over 18. That gives me 1 third. So I get 1 pi over 3, or just pi over 3. So that's from degrees to radians. Let's try another. Let's say I've got 45 degrees. So I'm going to multiply by pi over 180, because I want to get pi in the answer. So that pi has got to be in the numerator. Okay, well, I can, once again, just take the 45 and the 180, and I can plug it in my calculator if I'd like. Or you can realize that's going to reduce down to 1 fourth. So I'm going to end up with pi over 4. Now you may be asking yourself, well, what about negative angles, Mr. Allen? Oh, well, let me tell you what. Let's do negative 330. So I'm going to multiply that by pi over 180. Let's deal with the negative 33, or sorry, 330 over 180. You can plug that in your calculator if you'd like, or you cancel that out and reduce the 33 over 18 to be 11 over 6. So I get negative, sorry, negative 11 over 6. Negative 11 pi over 6 is going to be my radian measure. Awesome. Now let's start working with radians to degrees. So if we're going from radians to degrees, 
<clears throat> let's start with a problem here. Let's go with 2 pi over 3. And remember, if we're going from radians to degrees, we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. And it's easy to remember this because, hey, if there's a pi up here and a pi down here, boom, they cancel each other out. Now there's no pi, which means I'm just going to be left with a super awesome degree. Cool. So I'm going to have 360 divided by 3, which gives me 120 degrees. Boom. Let's try another one. So you have negative 3 pi for my radians. Once again, multiply by 180 over pi. And if it helps, you could always put one of these types over 1. That way you have two fractions you're dealing with, because I know that can be a little bit weird sometimes. Okay, well my pi's are going to cancel, and I'm left with negative 3 times 180. Hmm, well it's negative 540 over 1, so just negative 540 degrees. Not too bad. One more, how about? Let's say we have pi over 6. So I'm going to multiply that by, and of course, Pause it and try these problems, remember. Pause and try as you need to. I'm just going to keep on rattling through. 180 over pi. Oh, what happens? Cancel, cancel. 180 divided by 6 is going to give me 30. So 30 degrees. So just like with degrees, we're going to talk about coterminal and reference angles. Sound good? So let's say theta is 9 pi over 4. Well, on my graph here, it's going to come all the way around. Now remember, 2 pi is 360, so that's 2 pi right there. 8 pi over 4 would be 2 pi, so i got to go pi over 4 more. There's my angle. So that means my reference angle is pi over 4. because I went pi over 4 past my x-axis. Remember, it's always drawn to the x-axis. Let's try another coterminal. Well, that's a, that would be our reference angle. Let's talk about the coterminal angle for that one. Well, coterminal is basically adding or subtracting 360 when we're talking about degrees, so it's adding or subtracting. So add or subtract 2 pi, right? Well, if it's 9 pi over 4, it's a positive one. We're going to subtract 2 pi, and it's going to leave me with pi over 4. So for this one, my coterminal and my reference angle are both pi over 4. Just a coincidence that they're the same. It's not always the same. Let's try another. This time we'll do a negative angle. So let's say that theta is equal to negative 7 pi over 6. Ha! Huh. Fun! So let's draw it out. Negative starts down here. And remember, this goes to like basically 1 pi, right? Or negative 1 pi brings you halfway around, because 2 pi is all the way around. Well, 6 pi, or negative 6 pi over 6 would be part way around, so I'm just going to go just pat past that pi over 6 more. So my reference is pi over 6, because I went pi over 6 past. I went 6 pi over 6, got to go 7. So one more pi over 6. So that's my reference. My coterminal, well, I would add or subtract 2 pi to it, just like I would add or subtract 360. So negative 7 pi over 6, since it's negative, I'm going to add 2 pi. And when I do that, now you could get a like denominator. So I'm going to do it by hand since I don't have my calculator up here. Negative 7 over 6, let's just do that. Let's forget about the pi's for now. Plus... Well, 2 is the same as 12 over 6. Now I have like denominators. Negative 7 plus 12 is 5 over 6. Put that pi back in. 5 pi over 6 is my coterminal angle. That would be this angle right here. That's my coterminal angle. It has the same terminal side. Oh, <laughs> great. Last thing we're going to do is find exact values. Just like we did with degree measures, say I have sine of 3 pi over 4. I need to find the exact value of that. We're going to be using our 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90 triangles, just like we did before in our class. So you know what? Why don't we just convert 3 pi over 4 back into degrees? So I'm going to take 3 pi over 4 off to the side. If I want to convert it to degrees, what do I multiply by? 
Excellent job. Yes, it would be 180 over pi. You guys are great. Thanks for the participation. Well, my pi's are going to cancel now. I've got 3 times 180 over 4. So 540 over 4. And that gives me 135. So I get 135 degrees for 3 pi over 4. So sine of 135. Let's draw it out. That's my 135. My reference angle is 45. So I have a 1, 1, but don't forget that's negative 1. Whoop! Because it's going to the left. And this is root 2. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So 1 over root 2. I got to rationalize that. So I get root 2 over 2. And that would be my sine of 3 power 4. A little bit more work since we're converting to degrees and then doing the problem. There are other ways about it. This would tie into what we did before for degrees. So let's try one more of those. Let's say we have the cosine. Oh, let's do a negative. Negative 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to go ahead, once again, convert that to degrees. So why don't you try that on your own right now. So yep, once again, we multiply by pi over 180 cancel out those pies. So I have negative 360 over 3, which gives me negative 120. So cosine of negative 120. Draw it out. Negative 120 is going to whip me all the way over here. Then i got to draw my reference angle. That would be 60. So 60 is going to give me a root 3, but it's going down, so it's negative root 3. It's going to give me a negative 1 right here and a 2 right here. So don't forget those negative signs, otherwise you could be in a world of hurt. So cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, negative 1 over 2, donezo. And that's all she wrote for radians.